Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The Bible has been attacked by every kind of enemy, including Roman emperors, clergy of the Middle Ages, scientists, archaeologists, communist dictators, etc. All have tried to destroy the Bible and all have failed. Back in the 18th century, in the days of so-called Enlightenment, a man by the name of Voltaire said that within 25 years, the Bible would be forgotten and Christianity would be a thing of the past. Well, it's ironic that 40 years after his death, in 1778, the Bible and other Christian literature were being printed in the very building that had once been Voltaire's home. That reminds me of the words of the Apostle Peter. He said, All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Is the Bible the Word of God? It's an important question, one we shouldn't be afraid of either. Peter says that we should always be ready to give people a reason for the hope that is in us. And I guess it's one thing to have hope, but another thing to be able to give a good reason for that hope. Our hope is more than wishful thinking. It's based on a solid foundation, the Word of God. Now, of course, some would argue that believing in the Bible is okay for Sunday school children, but we're more enlightened these days. After all, archaeology has disproved the Bible, hasn't it? What would you say to that, Ken? Well, I would say it's a myth to say that archaeology is the enemy of Christianity. In fact, many times it's proven to be our friend. Uh, Josh McDowell, in one of his uh, books, gives several quotations, in fact, from archaeologists supporting the Bible. For example, uh, he quotes Dr. William Albright, a one-time professor emeritus of John Hopkins University, and he said, quote, there can be no doubt that archaeology has confirmed the substantial historicity of Old Testament tradition. And then he quotes another renowned archaeologist, Nelson Gluick, who wrote, and I quote, it may be stated categorically that no archaeological discovery has ever controverted a biblical fact reference. End of quote. And then another one, a gentleman by the name of Miller Burroughs, archaeologist of Yale University, he said, and I quote, On the whole, archaeological work has unquestionably strengthened confidence in the reliability of the scriptural record. It's interesting that you say all that, though, because I would say the average person would be of the opinion that the opposite is true. Yeah, I think you're correct. I would agree with you on that. But, you know, historical figures and events that are mentioned in the Bible have often been verified by archaeological findings. Uh, yeah, there are critics of the Bible and they've sought to discredit the scripture by quoting archaeology, you know, archaeologists have discovered this and come up with that and so on. But the opposite actually has been the result. They've actually supported and confirmed a lot of the authenticity of mm-hmm. the Bible. Let me give you some examples of that, Phil. Um, you know, for years it was believed by archaeologists that there was no such place as the pavement that's mentioned in uh, John 19 verse 13. And uh, so they said, no, we can't find it. There's no record of it anywhere. So therefore, it's just fictitious. But then it was located by archaeologists about 15 feet below the surface of what is present day Jerusalem. Now, here's another one, uh, the pool of Bethesda, where, where Jesus healed that man. Mm-hmm. They said, no, this place didn't exist. They, they just made that up. You know, whoever wrote that, that scripture just made that up. But now... Not only have they discovered the five porches of uh, that pool, but they've also come up with its name on a scroll that was found, Mm. you know, relating to that time. So there's a twofold witness to that which previously they said archaeology denies that. Uh, Talking of scrolls, scrolls, the Dead Sea Scrolls would be the most famous, I would imagine, for... Yeah, and we'll talk about that as well because that was a great finding that um, uh, really did bring forth a lot of evidence concerning the Word of God. Mm. Now, here's another one. In the Acts of the Apostles, um, there's a gentleman by the name of Gallio. I don't know if you remember. He was brought before Paul, and, uh, uh, you know, Paul was tried before him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, archaeologists say there's no evidence of this man ever living whatsoever. 
Uh, But then an inscription was discovered which not only confirmed that he did exist but gave the date uh, when he officiated. So there was an abundant testimony in that finding uh, of what we read in the book of Acts. It seems that people just don't want to believe the Bible, though. That's, I think, you know, don't look at the evidence. We'll hold to what we believe here that it's a bunch of rubbish that, you know, want to grab a hold of any bit of evidence that looks to disprove it. Why is that? Well, you know, I've got to say this, that atheism is not really, as many believe, a condition of the head but of the heart. Mm. Uh, The psalmist says, The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Actually, the word atheist, which comes from the Greek language, doesn't mean one who doesn't believe in God but one who is without God. Uh, To be an atheist is to be without God, to live a godless life, to live as if there is no God and uh, in that sense, there are many that are atheists. You know, they, uh, they want to shut God out. And that's what atheism is. It's an attempt to escape from God. It's a deliberate, if you like, blindness and suppression of man's most fundamental instinct, which is the knowledge of a creator. So in his heart, man does not like the idea of God to whom he must give account. Mm. And so he looks to his mind or his intellect to support the idea of the rejection of God. And uh, that's really where atheism originates, in the heart, not in the head. And then, of course, we look for all these intellectual arguments to support this desire that we have that there be no God. Yeah, because then we don't have to be accountable to Yeah, him. Let's just go back to the Dead Sea Scrolls if we can. Yep. That often comes up in uh, discussion about Bible and archaeology. What's the significance of those for us today? Because they're ancient documents. Why are they relevant? Yeah. Well, first of all, Phil, let, let's say this. There is an abundance of evidence of New Testament manuscripts dating back to the early centuries of the church age. In fact, uh, it is a fact that um, there is more evidence to support the New Testament than in any other writings of that time. Mm. You know, by far, by far, there's so much evidence to support the New Testament manuscripts. But, of course, the argument has always been about the Old Testament because until a few decades ago, the oldest Old Testament manuscript in our possession dated approximately AD 900. Okay, so it was argued that since the Old Testament was completed around 400 BC, uh, well, surely there must have been some corruption in the text as it was handed down during that period of 1300 years because yep. all we've got is documents dating, dating back to AD 900. It sounds like fair logic. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. But, of course, all that changed in the 1940s with the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls because amongst those scrolls there was um, either the complete book of the Old Testament or a part of each book of the Old Testament, if you don't understand what I'm saying, yep. either the complete or, or a part of. I think one exception might have been the book of Esther or something like that. And, um, of course, when these were discovered and compared with our current scriptures, they line up exactly in an amazingly accurate way. So That's incredible. That, yeah, that, that, you know, God's hand was upon the Scriptures, you know, being passed down through the centuries. Again, it's another example of the fact that this is God's Word. Yeah. And that great care has been taken right down through the ages to make sure that the, the uh, passing on of that is accurate. Yeah. You know, we quoted Josh, Josh McDowell, of course, who's done a lot of work in this area. And uh, he said, and I quote, the Dead Sea Scrolls, demonstrated unequivocally the fact that the Jews were faithful in their transcription of biblical manuscripts, end of quote. And if I can quote just another gentleman, uh, Charles Pfeiffer, he said, the Old Testament books from Qumran, which is, of course, where the caves were, where they were discovered, are those which we find in our Bibles. Minor textual variants occur as they do in any document which depends on hand copies for multiplication. But the biblical text may be regarded as essentially reliable. We're discussing a critical question this week. Is the Bible the Word of God? And we'll have more for you tomorrow. Until then, remember you don't have to carry that baggage because God wants you to be set free. For books, DVDs, small group studies and other resources from Ken Legg and details about Ken's ministry, shop online at vision.org.au. That's vision.org.au.